Hello and welcome back everyone. Uh, today we got a quick video for you. Um, we're going to be talking about our pizza oven landing and the materials uh, we chose to use uh, and how we went about installing it. And at first, um, I wasn't probably even going to make a video on this um, as it doesn't seem to be a, a very significant you know, part in the process. But, you know, after sitting down thinking about it, there's, you know, a few things that you do need to consider um, when uh, thinking about your pizza oven landing. And if you do it incorrectly, you could, um, you know, make some mistakes that um, it could actually hurt the performance of your oven. And so um, I thought, you know what, why not just throw together a quick video? So we're just going to run through how we went about our uh, pizza oven landing. Um, so we're going to start off and just talk about the three things you really need to consider when you are designing and planning your pizza oven landing. And the first one is the material. Um, there's lots of material you can use for your pizza oven landing. We chose to use uh, concrete. Um, you can also use natural stones such as a granite slab. You could use, um, you know, porcelain tile um, if you want, you know, to have, a dec have it be more decorative. Um, but really, you know, you want to look at your surrounding, your rest of your landscape and other materials you may have used in your outdoor kitchen. And that's what we chose to do. Um, we used concrete countertops and the rest of um, the outdoor kitchen. And so we chose to use, you know, the same product for the landing with the same colorants and really just bring it all and tie the look together. Um, but again, there's lots of materials you could use. And the second, you know, thing to consider when um, designing your oven or your landing for your pizza oven is, you know, what is the depth of the landing? What is, what's the, your desired depth? Um, you could do, you know, a very, very small uh, landing or you could do a larger landing. Um, things you want to consider is, you know, the larger the landing you have, the harder it is uh, to be able to reach into your oven. Um, the, but the benefit of having a, a larger uh, landing is, you know, you're able to pull uh, your, your pots and your pans, other things you may be uh, cooking in your oven, um, and put them onto the landing and be able to access, you know, the, um, the flip, the, you know, your, maybe your steaks over, your chicken over, add ingredients, season it, whatever you may be, need to do, and then you just slide it straight back in. There's no lifting, you know, the pans in and out of the oven, which, you know, can really be um, a back saver. And so really, you want to think about uh, yeah, how deep you want your landing to be. Um, so for ours, we went somewhere around 12, 14 inches on the landing because I wanted plenty of space to be able to pull the pans out and have access to them. Um, if you're just doing pizza, um, you know, maybe a, a shallow landing would work uh, because you're not going to be pulling, you know, your pots and pans out of the oven. You're just going to be using your peel. Uh, the third thing to think about, um, and this is really where you can go wrong um, on your landing and unfortunately you may you know hurt the performance of your oven which is how the height of the um, landing and where do you want that in relation to your uh, brick oven deck and so on ours we chose to go flush and so you can run a pan directly from the landing into the oven without really picking it up however um, it is not actually flush. There is a small lip, uh, maybe eighth of an inch or so below the deck. And so the landing is slightly below the deck. And then also we'll talk about it when we go through the install uh, procedure, but it's also slightly tilted, uh, slanted away from the oven. So any rain falls off and not towards the oven. And so that's a critical part. Um, but if you don't want to do flush, um, the top, the benefit of having it flush is it's easy to slide your pots and pans in. Um, but it's easier to get water in your oven that way as well. Or you could have it, you know, an inch or two lower. And the benefit of having an inch or two lower than your deck is it's, it's an easier working height um, if you have things sitting on your landing. Um, now, it's only a couple inches, so it's not anything major, but that is a benefit um, if having things a little bit lower um, than the pizza height deck. And especially if your oven's up high, um, it can make a difference. Um, so those are the three things that you want to consider uh, as far as design goes. And now let's go through um, the process we used. Um, again, we used uh, concrete countertops for this. And unlike the other countertops in the outdoor kitchen, for this particular pour, um, I did a couple things different. One, I just used standard uh, 
concrete mix. Uh, so I did not use the con concrete countertop solutions, Zcrete, uh, Liquicrete, sorry, um, product. I just used standard concrete, um, the same dye colorants as I use for the rest to get the same color. And I precast it in a form in our garage. Um, I used the same rock face liners, really a very similar process to how I cast the uh, chimney capstone. So if you are interested in the forming and pouring process, I'm not going to cover it here, but you can click on that video um, and kind of see the process very similar um, to how I did uh, the pizza oven landing. Once it's poured and it's cured, I let it cure for probably two days, strip the forms off, um, flip it over. And what you're left with, with a precast, is a very smooth um, and uniform finish. Um, and I really, really like how this turned out. Um, the material gives it a, a slight little texture, but it's still super smooth. Um, and if you look at the finish, there's little air pockets um, kind of throughout it. If you don't like that, vibrate the heck out of your forms to get rid of those air pockets. Um, you know, given what I was going for, which is more of a natural, more natural look. I don't mind the air pockets. I think it gives it a little bit more of a natural uh, finish uh, versus it being completely, um, uh, you know, perfect from a uh, finish standpoint. Um, but once you get it uh, flipped over, I let it cure for a number of weeks in the garage just to gain strength. Um, I did put some rebar mesh in the middle of the pour just to give it additional strength. Um, but really, there's nothing special about how I poured, you know, this particular landing. Um, once we got uh, ready to install it, uh, we were able to, um, my wife and I got it to the backyard. Now, what I will say is, this is very heavy. Uh, this was three bags, probably 108, close to 180 pounds. And so, make sure you have, you know, plenty of support ready to help you out uh, to get it transported. Uh, we used the, our tractor and the two of us, and we were able to get it back here. Um, we got some saw horses set up and, and put it on a couple saw horses to help um, get it closer to the height we needed um, as we were getting everything else ready. Um, and then, you know, once you're ready to um, install it, uh, you just use normal mortar like you would any other stone. Um, and you can see down here, if I go through um, the bases I've poured up to this point, um, you can see I have this, the block that I use for the, the, the pizza oven base. The next layer of concrete I have is, you know, the five inches, five and a half inches of um, the structural slab that the pizza oven's actually sitting on. And then there's this other concrete, newer concrete um, pour here, which was the, the height I needed um, to close the distance from where the pizza oven's sitting to where the top of the deck is. And so given that this is a two and a quarter inch, I needed to pour some additional concrete here to fill that gap to get it to the right height. So I could put, you know, a half inch of mortar down, set the countertop in that mortar and get to the right height. Um, and so for the mortar, I just use standard type end mortar. I used uh, two and a half parts uh, sand, mason sand to one part of the type end mortar, um, gave it a good mix. Um, I left, if I would do this over again um, and do something different, I would not leave as much of a gap between the concrete and this um, concrete slab that I used to um, set the slab on. I, I accounted for a half inch gap between there. I would have went smaller because what happened was I wasn't able to um, use a, a tooth trowel to put the, the mortar on and so it was hard to get the stone at the right height um, because the gap was so large. Um, so, yeah, if you're doing this, you know, account for maybe a, a quarter inch mortar gap between your base and the, the landing. And um, you should then be able to use a three eighths inch or a half inch tooth trowel um, and have better results than we did. So when we installed it, I just used a margin trowel. I slathered um, the landing, sorry, the, the base with um, some of that mortar, um, spread it out, put it on the first time and the uh, um, landing was too high. Uh, it wasn't, um, you know, the mortar wasn't, didn't have enough give in it to get it um, down into position. And so we had to take it actually off, um, which is not fun as now it has mortar on it and you kind of make a mess. Um, I had to shave some of the mortar down and then put the pizza landing back. Um, so lesson learned there. And hopefully that, you know, that tip will save you a little bit of frustration 
um, on yours. Uh, so then once we got the, 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 the landing on and got it to the right height, and again, um, we want flush, and we also then made sure with the level that it is sloping away from the pizza oven. You do not want it level or sloping towards the pizza oven. You will, any water that gets on this will run backwards into the pizza oven and you do not want that. That will make your pizza oven wet. Um, it won't get up to temp and you'll just have terrible performance. So just make sure, be careful of that. Um, once the slab uh, was in place, um, then you just need to take care of these gaps you'll have. Um, and mainly, you know, the gap between the landing and the fire, um, the fire brick. Again, for this, I just used uh, standard mortar. Uh, again, the two and a half parts and to the one part type end mortar. Um, it doesn't get hot, hot enough to worry about using some sort of refactory, um, just standard mortar will work. Now I tried to, to pipe it in, um, and as you can see, it did not work well. Um, it made a mess all over the place. Um, never used a piping bag before, a grout bag before, um, and I'm sure I did something wrong. I'm guessing the mix wasn't um, wet enough or something, but the water ended up coming out the top, making a mess, and so I ended up scrapping that idea uh, pretty quick, um, went to plan B, which was just to grab the handy margin trial and start slapping some mortar into the gap and, and pushing it down. Um, it worked. Uh, unfortunately, it was just very, very messy. Um, and so I had to spend quite a bit of time after the fact coming back with a sponge and water and kind of cleaning up the mess. So I'd recommend one, test out the uh, grout bag before you, you give it a go. Um, but then two, if you are going to use like a margin trial or something to try to get the grout in there, tape it off. Put some tape down um, and then that'll save you some cleanup work after the fact um, but then you know once that um, gr um, that grout was in that mortar was in we let her cure for a couple days just to try to get all the the water out of it we could and then once it's really cured your next step is just to you know if you're doing concrete countertop like us is to seal it um, and i used um, a ca concrete countertop solution uh, product um, it's a water-based sealer, um, food grade, um, very good sealer. Um, I've used it in the rest of our countertops out here. Um, it's just you need to put a lot of coats on. And so I, I went ahead and put five coats of that on um, to this pizza landing. Um, I used a standard you know, trim roller uh, for the top surface. And I just used your standard brush um, for the rock face. And I just kind of get the, the, the sealer on the brush and I just kind of tap it in. Um, to the face rock, uh, the face of the rock, and that gives uh, the sealer a chance to get into all these crevices and, and make sure you get a full, a good seal um, on that rock face. Um, so with that, once that sealer's dry, you're finished, and that's really all that's to your pizza landing. And it is a pretty straightforward process, um, but you just need to be careful that you know if if done in, uh, incorrectly, you could really have some problems with your your pizza oven down the road. So. Um, I hope this video helps. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we got a couple other videos uh, coming shortly behind this of us installing our Argentine grill. Uh, we're putting in some, um, some outdoor speakers um, and a lot of other things coming. So uh, hopefully uh, see you back soon.